Today we're going to use a DAW or digital audio workstation as a practice tool. So I'm in a situation where I can only practice on a digital keyboard for the time being. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen already that one of my dogs, Nella, was attacked by two dogs at a park last week. Thankfully, she survived, but it was pretty horrible. And while she's recovering, I'm staying at my parents' place where there's currently no piano. So I thought I would squeeze the most out of this situation. And throughout the past few days, I found some handy tools that I'm quite fond of. You'll be able to do most of the things I mentioned in any DAW, but for today, I'm going to be using Cubase. When we practice improvisation, it's often hard to review what we're doing, which is what helps us improve. Using a DAW can help us do this because the software basically transcribes your notes in real time and in certain ways, even evaluates them for you. Here's something that I just found out about. It's called Scale Assistant. And what you can do is set a parameter. So F Phrygian is what I'm choosing here. Everything that I play that's in F Phrygian will be in green in this case. And everything that's not will be in orange. I think I want Phrygian with major third. So this is so useful when you're practicing because you can keep yourself in check. So this next one involves odd time signatures. So I'm looking at this piece by Messiaen and there are time signature changes all over the place. Some pieces have many time signature changes that make it difficult for us to just put on a steady metronome beat. Using a DAW can help us create something that accommodates all of these changes, however complex they are. I'm going to build my own customized metronome for this. So the measure I want to start at is 716. So I'm going to just type in 716, 416 just to keep it consistent, 516. Okay. So a cool thing here is that I'm going to adjust the click pattern to match these chords. I think this works the best. If I want to, I can make it faster or slower very easily. The dog needed water. Metronomes can be uninspiring to practice with, and for a lot of repertoire, there is no such thing as a backing track. With a DAW, you can easily create a musical figure that acts as a metronome that can be set to any tempo. So this passage here, us pianists tend to rush this. We can easily mess it up. And a lot of times it lacks clarity. So what I'm gonna do is write a supplementary figure that I can play along with. So we're essentially creating a musical metronome. This will be helpful because it'll train our ears to listen to the pitches and try to match them. Know, for me it just makes it a lot more interesting and also it gives me more details to listen to so if i were to take it one step further i can probably do something like that. <laughs> so it's a little trickier and, and it doesn't sound as good because the notes are already busy but it is fun i think this is so helpful in improving the integrity of your subdivisions just compare practicing to these rapid 16th note clicks to this figure. Okay, so obviously when you're playing this, you're not going to want to play it so mechanically, but still, in terms of training and practicing it, this is very helpful. When we're learning a duet or an ensemble piece, we don't often get to hear all of the parts as a whole until later in the process. With a doll, we can create mock-ups of the ensemble so that we can hear all of the parts from the very beginning. So now going back to this Messian piece, it's actually for two pianos. So I can use the doll as my personalized duo partner that can play along with me at any tempo. That. Okay. Okay, this of course also applies to piano concerti or any other piece that has an ensemble.
Certain aspects of our playing are not as easily noticeable when reviewing our recordings, especially tempo and dynamic changes throughout a longer span of time. Within a DAW, you have access to so many different tools that are meant to help producers fine tune a track. These can be used to examine so many aspects of your playing, such as tempo, timing, and dynamics. So this is what the first page looks like, and I'm going to take these notes that I input and I'm going to build a tempo map so that I can see how my tempo fluctuates throughout the page. So I'm basically moving the measures so that I am aligning with what I'm playing. So this is really tedious, obviously. As I'm doing this, I'm also monitoring a little bit the velocity that I was playing at. So basically how hard I'm pressing each key. And sometimes I notice things that are inconsistent. Finally, I have my tempo map here. Pretty much in the same zone, although I'm getting progressively slower as is written in the score as well. But when I need to pull it back, I don't quite bring it back to the original tempo. So maybe I start this a little faster than I intend it to be. Some very basic insight that I gathered from a lot of work. <laughs> also another detail is that when I was looking through this, there are many chords here and I'm not always aligning all of the notes together. Sometimes I think it sounds better that way. Honestly, if you just play everything precisely at the same time, it sounds very mechanical and just unnatural. Let me know in the comments if you've tried any of these yourself. Thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon. And if you're interested in another video where I show creative ways of practicing, check out this video.